Alrighty, we're just getting our first shot in the water now. So we're using squid again, and uh, premium grade squid, beautiful squid. So you'll hear the beeper beeping, and that's essentially every time you hear it beep once, uh, it's a uh, signal to come on, come on a hook. And uh, when it beeps twice, that's the signal to come on a float. So we've got our toy line just deployed. Uh, anyway, under 25 degrees south, you must have your toy line deployed. So anything, anything below uh, 25 degrees south. Yeah, that's a good one. Yeah, so weather's looking pretty tidy. Sort of 15 knots for the next few days, so... Uh, we'll see how it goes. The, uh, we're, st we're still a day or so away from the, uh, from the new moon, so traditionally pretty quiet this week. But um, I didn't want to sit in port, so we'll get some gear in the water and see what happens. Got our blue ocean gear, uh, beacons. So that's our GPS beacons. I've got I've got some up charging upstairs at the moment, so they're fantastic. I've just been looking at the sounder there, well, all afternoon now. And just to give you guys a bit of an idea, you can see, let me just change this range. So you can see that area, that band of fluffy bits there, sort of from about 40 metres down to, to 100 metres. Well, essentially that's life. So that's uh, all your, uh, your phytoplankton's come up to the surface, and it's the biggest migration on Earth, and it happens every day. Uh, I'm just going to bring this out to... Say 500 meters. So uh, you can just see it start to come over on the uh, right hand side of the screen now. So every every night you get the phytoplankton starts rising up from about, about 500 meters, and um, I watch it. I watch it uh, during the day, and you can slowly see it coming up, and it basically arrives uh, at the surface um, just just on dark. And you can see there on the right hand side now that I've uh, put the range up. Uh, you'll see that band of life basically. So it's all the phytoplankton, and with that comes all your little microorganisms. Um, and then with that comes all your, your uh, fish larvae and um, eggs and krill and little baby squid and of course the squid itself. So that migrates every night to the surface. And uh, around the new moon phase, which is now, new moon was two days ago, so let's just bring that range back again. You can see on the right hand side, you can see all that life's just, a, just above the 100 metre line. So let's just bring that range back again to uh, 150 metres. And you can see that band of life. And essentially, uh, during that new moon phase, uh, you can see that it's, it's sitting at around 30 metres. Basically, it doesn't come right to the surface just because there's no moon. So it doesn't come right to the surface. And generally this week for the commercial tuna guys, um, this is the week we have off. I just didn't want to stay in port. I just want to get fishing. But uh, generally, uh, because life doesn't go right to the surface, um, this is the week we have off and we do our repairs and maintenance have it and have a bit of a rest. Uh, and uh, during during the, the uh, first quarter of the uh, moon phase, uh, you'll, t you'll start to see all this life coming right up to the surface. And that's why we generally target our swordfish around the new moon, when all the squid and all the life's right high up on the surface. Yeah, so, uh, so that's what we're looking for. Life, basically. And then, uh, so I've just shot, bring this around here, uh, I've just shot on the edge with show you with the time zero and you can see the uh, the blue ocean boys uh, we've just started hauling and you can see the boys are showing us the uh, 
showing us the drift pattern. So I can click on any one of the, the GPS boys and uh, get all the details on it. So that one there, boy number four, um, the sea surface temp below it is 23 degrees. Uh, it'll give you its course over ground. Uh, it's drifting at 80 degrees true and it's drifting at 0.5 of the knot. So you get all those details there. So what I've done is essentially that's uh, a, band of a band of warm water and you can see on yesterday's shot, the yellow shot, um, that's where I shot it and the, the current's ripped it out to the, uh, to the east and it's drifted into this cold water. So we did okay, uh, it was better down the bottom end. So uh, today with this blue line I've shot a little bit further into the warm water and we'll drift out, to, as you can see the gear's drifting out to the east again. So uh, I'm just trying to get that conversion zone, you know, from the, from the warm to the cold water. And then if you have a look over here at the Ocean O, um, you can see I'm targeting, uh, where are we, different mouse. Uh, I'm targeting this here, area over here, uh, where you can see the conversion zone and uh, the sea surface temp shear and the chlorophyll. So uh, it's a busy little area, so yeah, so that's the plan. We'll shoot over that. We've just started hauling, and as I say, uh, you can see the life's there, the, the, the phytoplankton and all the uh, um, krill and little microorganisms and larvae and all that sort of stuff, they've all come to the surface, and with that, come, of course, comes the predators. And the reason they come up during the night is essentially the big predators aren't here, uh, but uh, with all that life, you start getting all your, your juvenile fish and your bait fish uh, is feeding on that life, and with that comes your predators, uh, your big pelagic species. So, yeah, so that's what's happening. So we're just hauling a line now. Come and have a look at this camera in here. The boys are just hauling gear now, so. see how the night goes. Nothing yet, but uh, we've only just started, so yeah, so uh, that's the story with the, uh, the nightly migration of, uh, of uh, life basically on your Furuno and Time Zero gear. Table set up there. Here's some 
spare traces and uh, as the Navigear comes on board they repair it and it goes into your hook fit. Camp ready, bro. So we've got uh, pretty new guys on the gaff, and there's only one way to learn gaff fish. Nicely done, guys. Yeah, so. It's a good start, head shots. The thing with gaffing is you've got to be aggressive, eh? you've got to pull that bastard back hard. You've got to be aggressive in your gaffing, you can't flap around and use it like a baseball bat or a golf club. Yeah. So he'll uh, he spike him. Starting to tick over Andy? Yeah, yeah mate. I'll get them doing that bro. Yellow fin in the bay, mate. So, nice conditions, getting a few fish, but picking along nicely. in the tropics so we're starting to see the uh, the mahi mahi and a uh, bit of marlin and that yeah, beautiful day just about finished hauling and the sun's just coming up Yeah, striped marlin, yellowfin and a swordfish. So yeah, it's been a good day. Bit of a fruit salad day, lots of tropical fruits. Mahi mahi, yellowfin, stripey. Yeah, 
there, so certainly can't complain. And we'll probably do one more shot and uh, probably start wandering in. Bit of a blow coming. Not too bad, and I uh, haven't had a look yet. So uh, there was a cyclone. I think it's well clear of us, so sort of heading down towards New Zealand by the look of it. So last I looked, it was sort of uh, east of New Caledonia. So yeah, a bit of, I'll check on that as well. Alrighty, cracker day, nice start to the day. Okay guys, um, I get a lot of questions about the beeps, so uh, when we're deploying our gear, you'll hear a beep. Uh, it's about every 10 seconds and you just heard a double beep then. So your double beep tells the crew when to deploy their float line, and your beeps tell the crew when to deploy each hook. So that basically determines, it's called our ratios, that basically determines how we shoot our gear. So you can vary that by the length, the length of your uh, float ropes or, or bubble ropes, so your gear sits, hangs, hangs down uh, deeper or shallower. Um, ours are generally about eight fathom. We want them down deep enough so we don't have a lot of trouble with the ships uh, chopping our gear up. Uh, so yeah, you can uh, you can predetermine your depth with these, and then the distance between each hook and the amount of hooks between each float determine where your gear is going to sag, uh, where your gear is going to lie in the water column. So um, on your first haulback you'll basically know what's happening. Are you getting your fish up close by the floats, the bubbles, or are they right down in the middle of a sag? So that tells you where your fish are lying in the water column. So, uh, and we all have our, our favourite ratios. And then uh, you'll hear a triple beep about every five miles. Uh, and that's when we deploy one of our Blue Ocean uh, GPS beacons, which we can track on our, our Time Zero system. So uh, in the old days we used, as you can see behind me, you'll see the old direction finding beacons. So uh, that's what we've used in the old days. Uh, these days we use GPS beacons. So I can actually get rid of those beacons now. Um, yeah, they're great, but they're actually a pain in the ass and they take up a lot of room. Whereas uh, with your Blue Ocean, uh, Blue Ocean gear boys, uh, I hang mine on the cage, on the float cage, nice and simple, um, very robust and they need to do the job. So we deploy one of those about every five miles and that way if we do get shipped or a, a, a big shark chops the gear off or the current uh, breaks the gear, uh, we know which, which way our gear is drifting. Yeah, so, so that's the story behind the beeps. Um, we determine the, the length between each, uh, each hook, the distance between each hook. Uh, how many hooks between each bubble, and uh, that determines where your gear sits in the water uh, in the water column. So you know we all have our uh, our thoughts on on where the fish are hanging, 
and uh, that changes as well during the moon cycle. So we've just gone past the uh, new moon phase a couple of days ago and um, I'm shooting my gear accordingly and at, 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 at the appropriate time of the day. So, so yeah, that's the story behind the beats anyway, guys. Alrighty. First fish of the morning. Well, evening. What is it? 1.30 a.m. Skinny. Get a tally. Uh, what do we got? 50. 50 kilo. Grab the trace, uh, Tunda, grab the trace and start fighting the fish. Well done, mate. You guys, and the problem is that when they use the gaff, they treat the gaff like a axe or a hammer. Instead of sliding past the fish and hooking it, they are, uh, they're trying to beat it sideways with the gaff. But they're getting there, they're learning. You know, it's all part of a learning process, so. That's another one. Nice. That's So we actually shot through a, a warm patch last night. It actually got up to uh, 20, 24 degrees or 24.1 at one point, uh, right through the middle of a, a, a warm patch. So, uh, we'll see how the rest of the day goes. guys uh, we're back in uh, Coffs Harbour finished the trip so yeah it wasn't too bad um, we sailed oh, two days before the new moon so that's traditionally pretty quiet but uh, we did alright actually um, some nice sorties um, some nice yellow fit and a couple of nice really nice big eyes so yeah it wasn't too bad weather was glorious uh, got a bit of a hiding on the way home so it took us two days to get home 
uh, big steam. We were right out in the middle of the uh, Tasman Sea there, so um, good steam. And uh, we've got a, a full-on electrical storm on the way home. I could see uh, fork lightning striking the ocean all around me, but uh, we didn't get hit. But I ran around and turned all the electronics off uh, just in case. But yeah, yeah, so good trip. Boys went really, really well. And uh, we're back in Coffs Harbour, so we'll be in for a couple of days. Uh, get the fish unloaded, give the boys a bit of a rest, and uh, and then we'll go and uh, turn around and get back into it. So traditionally, with the moon on the rise, uh, from the first quarter on, uh, we start seeing some really good fishing. And I saw that in the last couple of days, so uh, the, the catch rate definitely picked up. So, so yeah, that's what's happening, guys. Um, in port for a couple of days, and uh, we'll go and rip it into it again anyway. So, all right, guys, cheers.